General Assembly today, physicians' assistants from across the state rallied in support of legislation they say would remove antiquated barriers to their ability to practice and improve health care access in the process. The bills would make it easier for the North Carolina PAs to get authorization to practice in other states by enacting what is called the PA Licensure Compact. Joining us now for more is Andrea McKinnon. She is the president of the North Carolina Academy of Physicians Assistants, who works as a PA with Wake Forest Baptist Health, also the director of the Department of PA Studies at Wake Forest School of Medicine. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Loretta. I'm so happy to be here. So let me start with this because, listen, probably everybody who's watching here has been treated by a PA at, at some point in their life, but maybe doesn't know what the definition of actually what the physician's assistant is. So t tell me technically what a physician's assistant is. Well, I'm proud to say that a, the physician assistant profession began right here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the birthplace of this beautiful profession. And what we were um, originally designed to do was to increase um, access for patients um, within the state uh, primarily, but also all over the nation. And so we are trained under the medical model we um, undergo two years of very intense training um, at more than 300 PA programs across the nation um, and then graduate with our masters and are qualified then to take care of patients in every aspect of care in surgery and inpatient, outpatient, every aspect. Um, and so very high qualified, lots of training hours um, in order to join hands and work alongside our physician colleagues. It, it, it's an important point. So we might see a physician's assistant when we're just going to see our general doctor, but we also might see one if we're going to see a specialist. The PAs yeah. are specialized in different areas. Yes, and myself, for example, I work in otolaryngology, um, head and neck cancer, um, alongside our physician colleagues, and um, I went through an additional year of training in order to do that work. So listen, we are talking all the time about the fact that there is a workforce shortage in the healthcare industry. We especially feel it in our rural communities here in North Carolina. Are, are PAs part of the solution to this problem? You know, the solution is very complex and I, I think I need to say that first because that's the reason why we find ourselves in this situation. The answer is going to be complex as well. I think we are part of that answer. I think we are part of that solution um, for sure. We know that most of this state is made up of rural areas um, and we still have not been able to provide the level of care that we would like to for, for our citizens, for our tax paying um, citizens. So let, let's talk about this proposal that's before the legislature right now, this um, interstate compact for physicians' assistance. Uh, how could this help clear some barriers for PAs? Yeah. Again, I think it's one of the pieces of the puzzle that might help with this issue of access. So this bill is uh, Senate Bill 879 and House Bill um, 1056. It will do a few things, and I want to talk first about what it does for our patients before I start to say what it does for PAs in particular. For our patients, you know, I will speak personally. I work at a very large um, academic medical center, and I see patients that are driving to see me from Virginia, mm -hmm. from Tennessee, um, from South Carolina. And they're driving to receive care that if I was able to um, log onto a computer, just like I'm doing with you right now, and have them log onto their phone or their computer and call in to see me, I could deliver care through a portal like this, be able to sign a prescription, be able to make a diagnosis um, right from the comfort of their home, maybe on their lunch break, that decreases um, barriers that our patients are facing, that they are um, feeling when they're trying to get their, you know, get off from work um, and be able to drive hours to be able to see me for a 15 or 20 minute visit, um, gas and that type of thing. So primarily I'm thinking about our patients and their access to be able to take care of their families 
while they take care of themselves. But if we're gonna be talking about what does this do for PAs, um, in particular, I, I would like to say that the, the profession, our PA profession, started with a, a ton of military members. I myself served in the military as well. And I have a lot of friends that are still serving and their spouses are PAs. And when they have to pick up and move from one state to another, their spouse, spouse who is a PA, they need to re, um, they need to get their license in that new state. And that can take up to six months. Um, in the meantime, they're losing, um, you know, their pay. Um, and it can be really hard for them to even make a decision to follow their spouse who is the military member. In some instances, those spouses may decide to stay behind and that breaks up families, um, which is not what we want. And so that's what it does for um, spouses of military members. But what it does for PAs like myself, who's no longer serving in the uniform, is again, it allows me to deliver that telehealth care to our patients. Um, really PAs, we just want to be a part of the solution. Um, just like everyone else who um, delivers that care, we want the barriers that are in place right now that um, stop us from delivering care efficiently. We just want them to be removed. And we have seen through some additional North Carolina polling that our, our um, patients, um, our constituents actually agree with that. Well, as you said, this bill has been filed and both the state Senate and the state house will be watching it closely. I appreciate you joining us to give it, giving us a little bit of background about what this would do. Thank you so much.